Yo, what's up guys? In this, oh my God, I'm going backwards. In this video, sorry, gotta put the car in park. In this video, we are going to, I'm gonna tell you why I don't think it's a good idea to rely on reduced and zero calorie foods to lose weight. I don't think it's a good idea. This is gaining more traction now ever since Greg Doucette has begun his meteoric rise to fame. Um, but, you know, just because a popular person says it does not necessarily mean that it's true. I don't think that it is true for most people. And I think most people who are trying to lose weight, who do not have a fitness background and are not like experienced with nutrition and fitness, like actual real world experience in terms of changing their body composition. I think they are headed for trouble if they try to rely on this, but that's just me, my opinion. So here we go. Um, so basically, yeah, like I said, this is getting a lot more popular now that, you know, Greg Doucette is getting more popular and he's saying his whole thing, like I'll sum it up in a sentence. He basically says like, you don't need to only eat chicken and broccoli. Um, you can, you know, I, my cookbook says you can have these like low calorie treats that are very filling and, and on some level that is there, there is some truth to that, but the, the way that I like to explain it is let's take three scenarios, right? Let's say you have one person, let's say there's three identical people who are all doing exactly the same exercise regimen and all have the exact same life in terms of work and what they do and all that, just for the sake of argument. One of them eats whatever they want, you know, not healthy food, what a pizza, fucking fast food, whatever. The other one eats the like low zero calorie version of unhealthy food. I don't know zero calorie maple syrup, diet Coke, uh, you know, gluten f or not gluten free, sugar free chocolate, like all this other stuff. And the other one is strict and eats, you know, I don't want to say chicken and broccoli. Like you can have a little sauce here and there. Right. But eats clean, healthy, natural food, which one is going to lose weight the fastest? Well, I think despite the whole calories in calories out thing, I, I would love to hear somebody's argument as to why they would say that the the second two of those people, the one who eats the zero calorie or low calorie foods, and the one who eats only the clean natural foods, that would be identical. Like it would not be identical. I would argue it would not be identical. And the third choice is the optimal choice. Now, I understand why this is such a popular um, industry because we don't only want to eat chicken and broccoli. We want to eat stuff that tastes good. Everybody does, you know, everybody, 100%. But the problem is that if you condition yourself to um, to eat these like sweet treat foods that don't have any calories, then you're still not breaking your habit of being addicted to the sweet treat foods, right? So, which means that it's more likely that your discipline is going to break and you're gonna go and eat the unhealthy versions of the zero calorie or no calorie sweet treat foods. Whereas if you condition yourself on the other hand to stick to the healthy foods, the chicken, you know, fish, lean beef, or even just any kind of beef, really fucking pork, whatever. I know beef isn't, or pork isn't beef, but get what I'm saying. If you condition yourself to like make a shift to natural foods, um, then I think you'll be much better off and your weight loss is going to be, some ladies watching me make that video. I think she works here. Anyway, uh, I think your weight loss is going to be much faster and you're just gonna feel better overall. From personal experience, when I go through periods where I will, let's say have, you know, I'll drink a lot of Diet Coke regularly, or most recently it was Arizona green tea, right? It was the Diet Arizona green tea. They, they were on sale at Walgreens and I was getting two of the like, you know how big the cans are, they're fucking gigantic, right? So I was getting two of those because they had two for a dollar. And it's cold and it's sweet and it's green tea, which is healthy, right? So I was drinking two of those a day and I just, my weight loss, I was like bloated. I don't know how to say it. I just, I wasn't, I wasn't losing weight as quickly. I wasn't staying as lean as when I switched to just plain water. Um, that's just my anecdotal experience. But the reason that I would argue for this is that when you have, you know, your body cannot tell the difference. This is the argument. I think this is backed up by a couple studies. Your body cannot tell the difference between, um, foods that are extremely sweet that don't have sugar and foods that are extremely sweet, sweet that do have sugar in terms of an insulin response, right? I think even two of the most, uh, two of the foods that are highest ranked on the glycemic index, which are dextrose and maltodextrin, I think it's those two. Those don't have any sugar. There's no sugar in dextrose. There's no sugar in maltodextrin. 
but they are the highest foods on the glycemic index, you know, pound for pound. So they will spike your insulin. And the more your insulin is spiked, yeah, the, the more fat you are going to store, right? The whole like calories in, calories out thing, that is true, but you can't say like, you know, and this is something, I don't want to pick on Greg Doucette. I love him. He's fucking, he's, he's brilliant. I'm, I don't know if he's brilliant. He's a smart guy, I guess. But like the message that he puts out there is good, which is train hard and don't eat garbage. Um, just nitpicking on this one small thing, which is that like, you can't completely discount the effect of that insulin has on your body. People like him, uh, people are similar to him because uh, that have, you know, a very extensive training background great genetics and are blasting 140 milligrams of testosterone per week, you know, you, you have a lot more leeway as to what you can eat, right? Now that I have a little bit more experience with TRT, I'm doing just over half of what his dose is. And I'm like climbing the walls on 85 milligrams a week. I'm like, I'm, I'm feeling really good. I don't really cheat that much on my diet. Maybe calorie wise, I'll eat like a little bit more than I should sometimes or even most days but still if I doubled the dose I can only imagine like the the type of um cheating I'd be able to get away with anyway not taking anything away from him I know he trains hard he rides his bicycle and all that shit and does weights and all that but still the point is that for most people because what's what's the problem with most people most people have awful eating habits they either don't know anything about what to eat or they have zero discipline uh when it comes to food and they just don't, you know, they don't work out. So they don't have that natural like punishment reward system of when you eat unhealthy food, you're gonna feel like shit during your workouts. And when you eat healthy food, you're gonna feel great during your workouts and across the course of the entire day. So most people don't have that. Um, and I don't think that it's good advice to tell them, it's like this whole flexible dieting thing. It's like, oh, you can eat our donuts because they don't have any sugar, they're zero calorie donuts, but motherfucker, you're still eating a donut, it still tastes like a donut, it's still gonna spike your insulin, and you're still in your brain, you're thinking, mm, this donut is really good, meaning it's more likely that, you know, eventually you're just gonna break down and go get a real fucking donut, you know, as opposed to if you only stick to the healthier foods. So my opinion about this and i've said this a bazillion times you guys are probably sick of me hearing it but the the cure to um to i guess we'll call them like eating disorders right obesity you could consider as an eating disorder as well basically being fat if you're not in, if you're not in shape you have an eating disorder let's just put it like that 99 percent of america has a fucking eating disorder because they're fucking fat as shit and they're just out of shape and they eat the wrong foods right they're they're not eating the correct foods so my opinion and my, the fact that I'm gonna state is that if you eat mostly meat and eggs and you eat only once a day, you'll be so full and so satiated that by the time you stuff yourself on those things, and vegetables, of course, if you wanna add some vegetables, by the time you stuff yourself on those things, you're not going to want to eat anymore. So your capacity to binge is pretty much non-existent, okay? So that is my opinion on why you should not rely on zero to low calorie foods to stay or to lose weight. Um, with the one caveat being that if you are extremely experienced and you like, you know how to cheat, I guess, and you already have a good base of like eating mostly healthy foods, then that's fine. Like if you're already in very good shape and like you want to buy the zero sugar ice cream instead of the, you know, full sugar ice cream. Okay. That's fine. You know, for people who are like experienced, you know, obviously the zero sugar ice cream is better than the full sugar ice cream, for example right? Or the protein ice cream or whatever the fuck people are eating these days. Um, but if you're, if you're completely new, then I think instead of trying to like cheat and find like, oh, well, how can I still, you know, not give up my food addiction while getting in shape? Like, how can I have it both ways? I think the better thing to do is to, um, throw yourself into the experience of learning to enjoy, um, healthy foods. And it, it is actually more enjoyable to continue to eat healthy foods on a regular basis because overall you just feel much better. When you eat healthy food, you feel good 24 hours a day. When you eat shit food, you feel good while you're eating the shit food and then you feel like shit for the rest of the day. Cool. That's my opinion. Let me know what you think about it. Leave me a comment. Peace.